What I love about Greensboro is that you go five minutes in any direction, you're gonna start seeing different architecture, different restaurants, different things to do. We're never without something to do on the weekends. It's a place where you can do about anything you'd like. It's got culture, it's got great food, it's got you know beautiful restaurants, parks, um, but the people, um, you, you just don't meet a stranger here in Greensboro. <laughs>is a bit unusual in, in North Carolina history in that we have places that represent three important periods of time in, in how the state evolved. The Revolutionary War had an impact on Greensboro with the battleground and uh, we have a national military park here to show for that. Greensboro got its name uh, from Nathaniel Green. This is a monument to Major General Nathaniel Green, the overall commander of American forces in the South. He's commanding the Army here at Guilford Courthouse on March 15th. Charles the Earl Cornwallis is the commander of British forces in the South, uh, one of the most aggressive combat commanders the British have. He is trying to uh, invade North Carolina as well as pacify North Carolina at this time. The significance of this battle is that it forces the British or specifically Charles Cornwallis, to reconsider what strategy he's using here. And from here, he starts making one bad decision after another after another until he gets captured at Yorktown. In the mid-19th century, Governor Moorhead was quite influential in the state. Blandwood certainly represents uh, that important period in, in North Carolina's time. This was the uh, family home of the Moorhead family. The Moorhead family is known across the state uh, through their scholarships with UNC. Uh, they had business interests in Charlotte and in Durham. Uh, their Moorhead City is named after the Moorhead family. And this is where it all came from. So Blandwood stands today as the earliest standing Italian Tuscan villa in the United States and it, it was really the grandfather of all Italianate architecture in the country. And then in the mid 20th century, uh, North Carolina was a role model for the civil rights movement. 59 years ago, a remarkable action took place right here at the F.W. Woolworth's Whites Only Lunch Counter where African Americans were first served a meal. If you'll reflect on uh, conflict throughout the world, people often refer to what took place in Greensboro as a reference for nonviolent social movements. People around the globe, they know Greensboro because of the sit-ins. Greensboro has been a powerhouse in the textile industry for more than 100 years. In fact, our Wrangler brand got its start right here in downtown Greensboro more than 70 years ago. So I think the name Jeansboro is fitting for a community who really helped kind of launch denim as an international icon. Greensboro is known as Jeansboro for a very good reason, and that being mainly Cone Mills for the longest time. You know, they started uh, several plants. They really put Greensboro on the map and made it essentially the thriving city that it is now. It's a building that was built in 1939 and is adapted and reused as a new hotel, but we couldn't find a building that's built in 1939, so we built the 1939 building we would like to have found and adapted and reused it as a, as a hotel, which is a wonderful fantasy. I love the name Proximity because the original uh, Cone Mills, that, which is the largest denim manufacturer in the world, is based here. Was, the original name was Proximity Manufacturing Company. And the idea was is the proximity to the cotton fields and the railroad. And it was a good proximity to put that mill. And it's a happy word. So many of the innovations that we have here really aren't innovations. The idea of heating the hot water with the sun is sort of duh. You know, it's pretty easy to do. There's 68 items that we did. It's just a matter of considering these things and employing them. A lot of energy goes into sort of starting a business, but we believe that an equal amount or even more energy ought to go into uh, what happens on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, we just don't believe in setting up a business and then just saying, okay, we've checked all the boxes, it's running, see you later. 